Cube. News and analysis from Big Data SV2014 is brought to you by headline sponsors Actian, Accelerating Big Data 2.0, and WAN Disco. We make Hadoop invincible. Hi, everybody. This is Dave Vellante. I'm one of the co-founders of Wikibon.org. And this is theCUBE, Silicon Angle's live production of Big Data SV. Big Data SV is running concurrently with Stratacomf, which is here at the Santa Clara Convention Center. We're across the street at the Hilton Santa Clara. And I'm here with Jeff Kelly, who is Wikibon's chief big data analyst. We've been giving you wall-to-wall -wall coverage of this event, all the news in big data, and bringing in all the guests, uh, the Cube alum, new Cube innovators, startups, people in Silicon Valley. Uh, this evening at uh, 6 p.m., we have a big reception here, a big Cube party, number of people coming. We have a couple hundred people have uh, already RSVP'd. They're still rolling in, so uh, if you're in the area, stop by. We'd love to see you. Uh, Jeff, good day yesterday. You were over there at the, uh, at the uh, convention center. John and I were over there last night. Look pretty packed. Um, Strata really is becoming, you know, a, quite a big big data show. A lot of suits this year. A lot of vendors. <laughs> and uh, remember when we originally came to Strata? Of course, it was, there was the T-shirt crowd. It was a lot of the the hardcore practitioners. A lot of data scientists. Really is becoming sort of overwhelmed with uh, with the business people. What do you make of that change? Well, I think that's a good sign for the market generally. Um, because business people write the checks, right? So uh, it, it's a sign that the market's starting to mature uh, and that big data is being taken seriously inside the enterprise. But uh, you know, to your point, it's definitely the, the show Strata itself has evolved significantly over the last three years. You know, we saw a lot of um, data scientists, hackers, um, developer types uh, maybe three years ago, and that's that percentage is, has dwindled a little bit. And now you're seeing, as you said, the, the more suits. Um, you know, from a uh, vendor perspective. Um, you know, the first couple of years, we were really focused on the Hadoop startup community. Um, you know, last year, what struck me walking into the show, I remember the first big banner I saw was EMC. And I thought that was pretty interesting. And of course, now they've spun Cloud up Pivotal. Cloud meets big data. Yep, now they spun up Pivotal. <laughs> so there's Pivotal and there's IBM. And um, so a lot of the big companies are, are taking notice. They know that this is a really important market for them. Uh, so, you know, it's definitely maturing as a market. That's a good sign. Um, but really, when you look at the vendor landscape over there, it's, it's, it's quite a hodgepodge. It runs from the hardware up to you know, through the database, through Hadoop, uh, analytic uh, applications, up through visualizations and services. So it's pretty much any kind of uh, vendor you can think of is over there at Strata today. So we're here in, in Silicon Valley. Of course, we're right next door to the new Levi Stadium that's going up. It's, uh, it's mostly complete. Uh, I think the Super Bowl is going to be here. When is it? 2016? Is that right, guys? Yeah. 2015? Okay, yeah. Well, so uh, build a new stadium and you get a Super Bowl. So uh, they're going to have to build some new hotels around here, I would think. So, so a lot of action going on here. Jeff, I want to talk about the big data study that you just released. I know we're going to talk about it a little bit later, but I want to tee up some of that. Sure. Um, you released their first report, you know, so you, we, it was a community effort, really, uh, back uh, two years ago. Uh, this is the third study. What prompted you to actually dig into this and, 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 and release that first study, which is a market share, market sizing study? Well, I think uh, a couple things. One, we were getting you know, requests and questions from our community about um, market share, which you know, there's a lot of startups, obviously, in this community. Who's gaining traction, who's not? Um, but just generally, I think we wanted the information as well. It's interesting to us as analysts. So we didn't see anybody else doing it, and we decided to take a stab at it. So I remember when the report first came out, um, you had a forecast. You were sort of targeting 50 billion by, I think it was 2016 or 2017, and it's roughly the sort of same shape of the curve right now. Uh, and it's got a little sort of slope to it, and it starts to pick up sort of, sort of mid-decade, 2014, 2015, really starts to rise. So last year, you said uh, the business did almost 19 billion, um, and so that's a big number. Now, when I look at who is driving that revenue, uh, there's a lot of big guys in there. IBM's the leader. HP's number two. Uh, uh, Dell, you know, you don't necessarily think Dell is synonymous with big data. Uh, SAP, Teradata, Oracle, SAS Institute. So the first six or seven are large, established, traditional vendors. So what constitutes big data in your definitions? Well, a couple different things. You can look at it from a technology standpoint. Um, things like Hadoop, obviously. Things like uh, NoSQL. Um, but there's also a lot of um, technologies that are not necessarily new, but are being applied to big data. That could be data visualization, uh, data integration. You've got to get the data into these platforms. Um, and then, of course, you've got services as well uh, that help 
uh, companies, both from a technical perspective, architect systems, uh, but also determine things like best use cases to start with and building the business case. Uh, some of the other things that uh, we include, of course, are the hardware. You've got to you've got to run these systems on some hardware, and you know to scale out architecture. So uh, you mentioned Dell. You know, a lot of Dell boxes are used to. Uh, constitute these, you know, Hadoop clusters and other things. So um, it's kind of a range of technology, but it's all those things um, like data visualization, et cetera, as applied to big data workloads. And, you know, that the other part of the definition, the way I look at it, is big data is, is also a mindset. It's not just technology. It's just not the structure or lack of structure of the data or the volume of the data. It's the mindset, how you go about analyzing data, looking for new ways to do things, new ways to uh, drive new lines of business, new types of revenue, um, become more efficient. So it's really a mindset as well as a set of technology. So I press you a little bit because because a lot of the things that you just said could be considered, you know, driving new types of revenue, et cetera. Uh, I mean, a lot of, Larry Ellison could stand up and say, "Yeah, well, that, that's us. We do big data." But isn't there an element of the definition that that suggests, just again from a technology perspective, that you're doing things differently than you would with traditional uh, 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 systems? In other words. The, the type of data that you're dealing with, the amount of information that you're dealing with, the speed at which you're ingesting data requires you to do things differently. Like, for example, ship function to the data as opposed mm -hmm. to you know, bringing data into a pipe. Do you, do you make that distinction in your definition? Yeah, absolutely. There are, uh, you know, there are different ways that you need to process this data. It's not so much that you couldn't necessarily do some of these workloads in the past, but it would be just too expensive or take too much time uh, to, to, to make sense in a business context to do these workloads. Um, so, so from that perspective, um, certainly it's the way you, as you said, you bring, you bring the compute to the data rather than moving the data around. Um, you know, you look at different types of data. You integrate multiple types of data from different sources outside and inside your enterprise. Um, it's about doing things in real time, making real time decisions based on analytics. So absolutely, there's, there's different components to it. And, you know, from the, you know, the Oracle perspective, you know, they'll, they have their definition of big data for sure. Um, but one of the keys, as I mentioned, is the, the big data movement, if you will, as, as we constitute it, as we define it, uh, a key component is that uh, it, it is practical from, a, from an economic perspective. Um, so while you could potentially buy a really expensive box from Oracle uh, to do some of these workloads, you know, that's not really a viable option for a lot of enterprises. So I want to bring John Furrier into the discussion. Uh, the big data movement started here in Silicon Valley. Really, you know, it was Google, you know, things like Bigtable and, and MapReduce and the activities that were going on at Yahoo. And then you had subsequently startups like Cloudera. And John, you were here uh, watching that. Um, but before I get into the big data, uh, you know, the, the, the social media, the whole Web 2.0 2 uh, trend preceded big data. So I want to start there. Uh, that was to create a lot of excitement in this area. Uh, you're seeing some some big IPOs, you know, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, you know, et cetera. Uh, my first question is, before we get into the big data pieces, are we in a social media bubble? Uh, good, Dave, good question. I think one of the things that's exciting to watch is if you look back at uh, 2008, that was really the great recession uh, point where you saw a kick up from there, and that's been a growth cycle ever since. And if you look at the activities, especially on valuations on the market, you've seen significant growth in opportunity. So you saw Hadoop come out of that, the unstructured movement of databases, uh, and then you saw Facebook platform, which was launched a year earlier, um, come on Twitter, et cetera. And then you've seen since then a huge data-driven social media perspective, obviously the iPhone, uh, propelled that with the smartphone. So that brought the consumerization trend in there, which really highlighted the value proposition that big data can offer. At the same time, that was the beginning of the cloud kind of Kool-Aid. People were drinking the Kool-Aid around cloud. So we're now, you know, good five years into that movement, and you're seeing huge growth. So the market is growing. It's been been growing like a, like a tsunami of, of opportunity, and valuations have been reflected on that. So if you look at the companies here that are now growing, you know, the startups, per se, the valuations are very, very high. So there's a huge growth opportunity that's a premium on those startups. And the big guys are coming in with strategic changes with their plans. So you look at, you know, the, the, data, the data warehousing, business intelligence markets being retooled. You've seen the notion of data science, which is being driven by machine learning and some other technologies that's really built on top of open source and the database changes. So really you've seen since 08 to today, uh, a massive opportunity. And this year, I think, is, is the valuations are reflecting on that trend, that mega trend. So it is a perfect storm. It's the confluence of those mega, mega trends. And in Silicon Valley, you know, the, the, we are in a very frothy bubble environment. But there's growth there, Dave. So I think the question is, who is going to tap out? Who's going to extend the, that lead? 
who's essentially rearranging the deck chairs, as we say, versus really delivering value. So the value conversation ultimately is what investors want, that's what consumers will vote with their, with their dollars, and ultimately the valuations will level out and or grow based upon that valuation. So clearly, you know, guys like Facebook are delivering value. You made the call, when Facebook, you know, IPO came out, it was, it was not well received because they sort of, you know, oversold it. They did a great job, actually, of, 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 of picking Wall Street's pocket for, for a change. <laughs> but 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 so you made the call. You you were a bull on Facebook, and that, that's at least thus far turned out to be right. Um, you know, Twitter was sort of the opposite. Twitter IPO very successful, and then it took a hit after it it, it um, uh, announced its its first earnings uh, release. But yeah, I think you're still a bull on Twitter in terms of its value creation potential. Obviously, LinkedIn as well. So those are three strong examples of value creation. Yeah, I mean, I think LinkedIn is one of those things where it's interesting. They're getting kind of good marks right now on the heels of a Twitter disastrous first earnings call from a, the Wall Street's perspective. LinkedIn's showing some pretty good numbers, but there's some nuances here that I'd like to explain. I'm bullish on Twitter, I'll tell you why. And LinkedIn, I'm not too sure on. I think LinkedIn has some characteristics of a, of a viable subscription market with their target audience, which is headhunters and people looking for jobs. And I think there's a nice revenue model there that's steady and cool. The problem with LinkedIn I see is that their data is not open. And you're hearing a lot at the Strata Conference about closed data, and that ultimately may or may not be an Achilles heel for LinkedIn. On Twitter, I think what's interesting about Twitter is they kind of took it in the shorts on their last earnings call because their active uniques aren't growing as fast in terms of new, net new users. And I think what you heard from Dick Costello at Twitter was essentially saying, look it, we're making some tweaks to our algorithm on timeline impressions. And timeline impressions is the metric that everyone loves because it's a big number. And that's really not the preferred user experience you see with Twitter to make that growth number work. Now Twitter to me is absolutely viable, great utility, the user experience issues will be addressed by the company, but they're biting the bullet. Now, biting the bullet means they're shifting the metric to not timeline impressions, but interactions and engagement, which is the right direction. So in a way, they're biting the bullet. And you know, I wrote a blog post on that and, and, and saying, hey, I'm, I'm long on Twitter for that reason. However, you know, Frank Slootman at ServiceNow pointed out on my Facebook thread, uh, my private Facebook thread, is that's what road shows are for. They should have taken care of this before the road show. So the thing that that, that's the wild card in the Twitter equation is they all made money, they're all rich on the IPO, and should they have taken care of this business prior to the IPO? Unlike Facebook and Google, for instance, they took care of their revenue model business per se prior to the IPO. Google more than Facebook. Facebook had some great revenue coming in just on sheer volume numbers of interactions and engagement. They then tweak their model to be much more ad-centric in the news feed. So I think you know that's a little bit of an exception, but Twitter certainly is viable. I think it's a good call by management, smart move, to shift the metric from Wall Street from timeline impressions to something more specific that actually highlights the flywheel of user engagement. So I want to get your take on, on one other thing before we break here and bring on our, our first guest. So the social media movement, the whole Web 2.0 thing, it was all pure plays, all startups, all new companies. You didn't have, you know, sort of traditional vendors, quote unquote, get in there. Of course, it's not necessarily an enterprise play. With the big data movement, you're seeing all these companies, IBM, HP, I mean, name, Oracle, name any big company, and they're sort of co-opting the big data, you know, themes. So is, is this a case where the big guys are actually innovating, or is this all marketing? Uh, the, are the startups getting overwhelmed because they're part of the distribution channel? Um, what's your take on the innovation cycle with big data and how it difference, differences or similarities with the Web 2.0 you know, internet? Well, I, I, you know, I think, as you know, Dave, I started a venture back company in 2004, five time frame around the podcast, it was called Pod Tech, and uh, my uh, contemporaries, Evan Williams started a company called Odeo, there was another show, uh, one I'll call Pod Show, all venture backed, all to democratize media, and it was a great vision. The bottom line is that podcasting really never made money because of iTunes and the freeness of, of podcasting. But we were all part of that first generation social media movement, and what happened there was a couple things. A business model just never materialized, and I think we all kind of wanted this to happen. We, we felt good about the democratization of media and, and user experience. And then the 08 recession hit, and that really kind of dampered up the whole Web 2.0, the media market from podcasting, blogging, and Web 2.0. But Web 2.0 just never had a business model they could hang their hat on saying, this is a scalable recurring revenue model that drives growth. Enter big data, big data with the smartphone highlights the benefits of the value you can get out of big data. And I think the deliverables you're seeing from companies that are bolting on a revenue model and a business model with big data is value and people will pay for it. We, we heard from MapR yesterday, they take an approach with distribution when they charge subscriptions, 
Bankers love that. The other open source models are banking on support, both viable, both business models. And I think the key with the big data movement is that you have the maturization of the platform and cloud, you have the smartphone, a mobile only, mobile first, you hear that buzz. And more fundamentally, you have a business model behind it that delivers value that people will pay for. So to me, a business model, good market timing, and that ultimately is really what Web 2.0 didn't have. So Web 2.0 kind of transitioned into, into the mobile market. So to me, all the Web 2.0 stuff hits right now with mobile and the scalability of cloud, getting in, low cost, a lot of leverage, and, and those are nice factors in, in building a business. John, great perspectives. Uh, Jeff, thank you as well for sharing your thoughts on the big data market. We're gonna, we're gonna hear more from Jeff Kelly later, and of course John and I will be back uh, throughout the day, as will Jeff Kelly, interviewing guests uh, from Big Data SV from Stratacomf. Uh, we're here live in Silicon Valley at the Santa Clara Hilton. We'll be right back after this word.